Okay, I, I took a late eight, 80s model Murray mower, stripped it down, took everything off of it, except the front axle and rear transaxle, and I turned it into a little electric go-kart for the grandkids. And I made a steering mechanism on it, just a steering wheel off the mower and the shaft that came with it, and just made me a steering plate there that hooks to the axles. Just basically like it did before, but instead of one going across to the other, like the original rod went here, moved this wheel, and then the rod went across and moved the other wheel. Well, I just done everything in the center, cut that rod in half, and made it do that. Mound the seat straight down on the chassis. And these Murrays had that real flat, streamlined chassis. They were set up that way. But anyway, I've made this electric. And I've put an AC motor on it. Anyway, that's the outside of the body frame. It's like a little goat cart, but it's electric. And next, I'll show you underneath the uh, drive mechanisms for the uh, shifter which this is the shifter, like all the way back is reverse, then it's neutral, then first, second, third, fourth, and fifth, five gears. And the electric motor I have on there, I'll show you what it is. It pulls it in all the gears forward up the fifth gear, but if you're on a hill or something, you have to drop it down into first, especially if my body weight, 200 and some pounds on there. Now I'll show you the motor and the underneath mechanisms uh, that work the the linkage for the transmission I put on and the linkage for the, which it's actually just an engaged pedal, but it acts as a gas pedal. And I'll show you that. Well, I'll show you in a moment. I'll just show you kind of how it works. Plug it in. Just got an on off switch for the AC motor. It kicks on and runs. And it's in neutral, but you'll be able to hear the transaxle kick in as I push this. And it's variable speed. That's that's the transaxle pulley spinning inside the belt. Because as soon as I let off the gas pedal, it takes tension off the belt, so the transaxle pulley keeps spinning. And until it stops, it makes that grinding noise against the, the fan belt. So I'll shut it off. And I'll show you the underneath. Okay, here it is on its side. Uh, main thing, the motor is just a Dayton one half horse, 115 volt AC motor. It's got the starter on it. So as soon as you kick it on, it starts. And I had to reverse the polarity to spin it the opposite way to make this work right. But the belt, I had to weld some guides on. So when you push, when the clutch is not engaged, which is actually the gas pedal, uh, the belt will stay here as the motor spins. And like I said, once you disengage the clutch or the gas pedal, the belt stops, but this back pulley keeps spinning for a while. It makes a lot of noise. Tried to fix that, but I can't. So here's the gas pedal, just a spring, a rod on a pivot with the push rod with a, a tie rod connection here, welded to another tie rod connection here so that they work like that. But as that goes, I've welded this pivot here so that this pushes this way and that pushes that down which engages the belt so that's basically the gas pedal the more you push on the gas pedal the tighter it makes the belt and the more engaged the transmission becomes and the shifting is basically the same it's just a rod coming to the side a tie rod end on this end connected to the shifting mechanism here for reverse neutral first second third fourth and fifth and that's basically all it is underneath. Just some rigged together parts, but it works pretty cool. And I'll show you that in a moment. I thought about, uh, <clears throat> like some other guys have put DC motors on these, but it takes so many batteries and you gotta charge them. Uh, and the weight of the batteries and the placement to put them, I don't have a lot of room on this chassis without building an extra you know, thing on the back and all that. 
no farther than the kids are going to go. I thought, well, I've got some AC motors laying around. I'll just use one of them. But DC would be cool because you could go without having the cord attachment. And that's, you know, I understand that. But I went AC just to see if I could do it, to see how it would work. And it's basically the same setup as a DC would be, except you're stuck, you know, you got a tether of a cord. But it's a pretty cool project. I didn't go DC on this is because the batteries, the weight, the charging and all that, no more than they're going to run this, no farther than they're going to go. I'll just leave it AC. So that's why I didn't go DC. Thought about it, looked into it, and decided against it. Okay, to show you how it works in action, it's plugged in, and I have like a 100 foot cord, and I can hook more cord onto it for no longer, they'll be running around with it, the cord won't get hot. So they can go up to 200 feet from the garage here and run around the yard. I'm trying to keep where well, they can't go around trees and such, but turn the motor on, put it in first gear, it's in gear. And it won't go anywhere until you push the pedal. That's that transmission pulley slipping around the belt and makes that noise. Then I can put it in reverse. And just to engage the clutch, which is reverse of the clutch. As you engage the clutch, it makes the belt tension. But it works pretty cool. It's not much quieter. I mean, as it's running, it's quieter than a gas motor. But when you let off the uh, gas pedal or the engagement mechanism, that pulley makes a lot of noise till it quits spinning on the trans transaxle. But it's pretty cool. It's a fun project. I thought about painting it and all that, but not yet. Anyway, that's what it is. AC, I don't know, it's not really a go-kart. I don't know what you'd call it. It's just for the grandkids. Mess around the yard. Okay, before I show you this in action, I wanted to show why it looks different. I added a seat back here because the kids are, it has, they're too young to steer it right. They don't have the strength to turn it and the timing and they're not drivers yet. So I added this seat pad. I just uh, put a piece of wood on top of the back of the seat, came over here welded me a bracket back here on the pole, which this pole keeps the, the cord up above the tires so it doesn't catch when you go around corners and such or back up. And I also put a, a tensioning mechanism here so the cords don't get tight, it won't unplug here, but if it's an emergency thing, it'll unplug at the other end. But I wanted to show that's why that's there, is so I can sit back here and the kids one of the kids sits here, buckled in, and I kind of drive it for them, help them with the gas pedal and help them with steering and the shifting and what have you, because it's a little rough for them. They're pretty young. One's three and the other one's just 18 months, but they like riding in it. Right now they're too young to actually drive it. But anyway, I want you to see why that's on there when I show you a demonstration of how it runs with, with my weight on it without one of the kids. Okay, there's been an addition since my seat was added, besides the cat checking out the main seat of the electric go-kart. I had to add this trailer. And you can hear the guineas again. I don't know where they're at. You can hear them. Anyway, the trailer was added because both kids have to ride at the same time. It causes a problem. So at first, I mounted the car seat with metal poles straight to the top of the trailer. Well, it bounced too much because the 13 inch tires on a single axle on the trailer 
didn't handle the bumps like the bigger tires on the go-kart. Even in, I guess third gear wasn't too bad, but fourth, fifth gear, they just getting beat to death. So now I put four trampoline springs, which we had a trampoline that got tore up by a tornado or bad wind. So now they bounce. And I'll show you that later. But this little thing will pull <laughs> with that 115 volt or 115 volt half horse Dayton motor AC will pull me sitting back here driving and steering and helping one of the kids up front and the other kid back here and they switch positions so they both like the different positions and I ran the cord from my uh, tether here uh, with the, the tensioning tether where they can't come apart up to another pole on the back of the trailer which comes out back here with another tether tensioning piece where it can only go so far either way and I will show you how we all go around the yard hopefully in the future the kids can drive it themselves one the older one pull the other one but for right now I have to sit back here and drive them both but I want you to see how an AC motor pulls this thing easily around the yard even up to fifth gear with my weight I'm like 220 230 230 pounds and a 20 weight kid here, 20 pound weight kid here, 20 pound weight kid there, and probably 50 or 60 pounds of weight of trailer, that motor pulls it easy. Like I said, if you get on a hill, with all three of us especially on it, you may have to shift down to third, maybe second, get up the hill. Then once you get over the top of the hill, you can go back up the fourth or fifth gear and you cruise. But we'll show you that in a little bit. Just wanted to show you why the extensions were added before I show you how it actually operates.
puppy. Poor baby.